Hey guys, Freaky Finance here. Last week we looked at a copper miner play, a uh, capstone miner, and it's a new mine for Santo Domingo and Chile coming online in 2024. This week we're going to go back to China, again for a recovery play, as a lot of recovery plays got hit pretty hard during this last Delta variant fear that we've gone through. And Melco stood out for me. I was going through a lot of Chinese companies because a lot of them have turned down, say, 50% from what they were just in February. So... That's quite the swing in six months, so usually you can pick up some interesting companies. So I do own this one. I'm playing this one for a call option, which we'll talk about in a bit. And I also picked up Las Vegas Sands for the similar reasons. It's the similar region in Macau that I'm playing. Just shut down, so the share price reacted accordingly and sold off very hard because technically there's no revenue during a shutdown or very little. But anyway, so I'm playing Melco on the recovery again, and I'm playing Las Vegas Sands on the recovery again. Two very different companies, but Melco, in my opinion, is the riskier one. So I used some options to get some additional leverage on a leveraged company. It's always super risky. <laughs> I don't recommend call options to people who uh, who are unfamiliar with them. But again, in my opinion, with options, especially for event-driven things, I feel like whoever's writing these call options is using historical variants for their Vega. It, it has to be, right? It has to be like a typical Black Scholes thing. And uh, they, they seem to underestimate the event-driven. Like this thing literally just sold off 50% and for whatever reason they're giving me like a almost like historical var like it's a little bit higher end like i'm paying quite a bit for vega but not as much as i think i should based on the fact that it's event driven because of covid <laughs> right so anyway i digress there a little bit but there's kind of there's some interesting opportunities happening where who's ever writing some of these call options is not not understanding the uh the volatility that's embedded in the stock price <laughs> like it, it partially is but it, it's really not for these type of big swings in covid events so melco is a casino play it has three well we'll go through the properties right now it has three properties in macau itself then it has one in manila so the philippines and then one in cyprus and then it has a bunch of little small ones that are immaterial for today but anyway city of dreams is the main one in my opinion in macau it's the biggest one 1.2 million square feet and they've been putting quite a bit of work into this they have a new hotel called morpheus and they're attracting more and more higher end vip clients or really that's the whole angle of all macau <laughs> trying to get it's really a fight for VIP because VIP yield the most economics for a given casino, right? Also, Alteria, which is a smaller one, struggling lately. And we'll talk about that in a second, but again, it's smaller. We have these little clubs, which are altogether okay, but I mean, they're not important for today. And then you have Studio City, which is the other big one in Macau. So really, they have two big ones in Macau, one legacy one in Macau. And then they have City of Dreams Manila in the Philippines. And then they have City of Dreams Mediterranean in Cyprus. So they have a temporary casino there. And then they're moving the business to the new one that they're building. Which does look pretty interesting, but it's still very early on for this one. So they kind of got hit during COVID pretty hard because they're expanding when COVID hit. Like, and this company's really been expanding for quite some time now. In terms of CapEx, I mean, and reinvesting in their casinos. When you look at the financials, because this, this is always fun, right? To see this, just how hit these companies have been hit during COVID. It's just crazy, right? You're going from 5.1 billion US to 5.7 billion US, and then boom, 1.7 billion US, right? That's a huge decline. And we were just starting to get recovery in these casinos. Like, none of them were performing that great, but they were getting back there anyway. Especially City of Dreams in Macau was getting back there. Anyway, this recent shutdown kind of just screwed everything up again. But we'll have to see. They're starting to reopen again. Because China has a zero tolerance policy, so anytime there's a case, they shut down the whole freaking place. <laughs> So, you know, it leads to these big swings in uh, performance of the underlying casinos. So, anyway, ultimately there is a big risk here. But that's why there's an opportunity. Or at least that's my angle. Um, they have started to cut some GNA costs, and we'll talk about that as well there on the latest call. But overall, you can see the business swung from being fairly profitable to being unprofitable. And interest expense has been creeping up because they've been having to plug the lower cash flow with debt. So that's another thing to take away is that the longer this takes, the weaker the balance sheet. So anyway, um, in terms of total assets, so this is nice. So a lot of, shouldn't say a lot, but it is quite a lot. The Chinese companies don't uh, break down like the assets, like big assets on their balance sheet. And they also don't provide real cash flow statements, which is annoying. So anyway, for this one, they do break out where the assets on the balance sheets are. So you can see City of Dreams and Studio City are the huge assets. They're $3 billion investments in the hotel. And you can see the other ones are very small. Altera is an older one. 
And then City of Dreams Manila is, I guess, the third biggest one on their portfolio in terms of asset size. We'll go through the maps in a second, but really the three that I talked about, Studio City, City of Dreams, and Altira, these two are on the main strip, I'd say, and this one's kind of a legacy one up here. Again, these two are the primary assets and the two primary uh, revenue drivers and EBITDA drivers. And it's close to the Macau airport, and they're building in a new line here. To get more traffic to Macau so there is some good things happening but really my play with China is just the rise of the middle class really I guess I should I've been looking at quite a few smaller Chinese companies and a lot of them are growing pretty good but they're also spending quite a lot and the spending is in my opinion indicative of the upper class or the sorry the middle class and the bottom class keep rising in China and I think that's going to to help these casinos out both Las Vegas Sands which has quite a bit of exposure in Macau now and this company as well, Melco. And I think this future spending is going to help these companies in the long run. So I'm hoping I can use the Delta variant as an entry point for something long term. But again, I'm playing Melco's call options, so it's going to be within the next 16 months <laughs> as the theta expires in early 2022, or sorry, 2023. Anyway, this is just another map to see. I'm not sure how familiar you are, but the main strip here, Katoi, um, Studio City is in the bottom, and City Dreams at the top, and then you have the Parisian and Venetian. And in, in the middle this is also a good sheet to just to see kind of how they're doing over time and how they're trending at certain casinos specifically here the bottom one the bottom charts the daily average win per vip table and per mass table and you can see vip was actually coming back pretty good at city of dreams and altera has been kind of all over the place and manila was coming back but then philippines also had to shut down so we'll have to see what q3 brings for this company but the, if you look at the share price you can see it's been under a lot of pressure because of these shutdowns that's why i got excited Anyway, this is another good chart for me just to see how these different casinos are performing. Um, they do have the room metrics here, but if we looked at the uh, casino revenue, is by far the primary driver of revenue, right? They do have room revenue, but in the context of the casino revenue, it's very small. And even food and beverages is fairly small, right? So I'm looking at the gambling angle because that's the most material part of this uh, reopening play. So that's why I'm going down here instead of up here at the average daily rate. But you can see that the uh, average table... Average games win per unit per day. Still a far away from where it was at Altera. Um, City of Dreams actually started coming back. Studio City was actually coming back pretty good. And then Singapore was starting to, but still not quite where it was before the COVID panic. And a lot of these never really came back to where they were before the COVID panic. But I like to try to visualize where they are. So this picture up here is what it looks like at night, according to them. Again, I go down here. And it's funny because I use Google Maps, obviously, right? Because I'm North American. I go here and I don't see the hotel at all. <laughs> and I look down here and I see 2008. I guess you guys can't see that because my face is in the way, but 2008 is the last time this picture was here, which makes sense. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't even see it. But anyway, if I go to an actual picture that someone took, I can see the uh, casino, Studio City. But yeah, anyway, it's there. <laughs> and it does look pretty nice. It looks kind of like a Hollywood feel with like the glitz and glamour and the spotlights and stuff. And then they do have the, uh, the stuff the other way on the other traffic circle. They do have their City of Dreams, their main one. Um, again, when I go to Google Maps, I can't see it because it's being built in 2008. So both of these casinos are being built in 2008. Anyway, this is the Morpheus Hotel. Their picture, not mine. I always like to see it myself, right? <laughs> anyway, it is a pretty fancy looking building. But yeah, I just find it funny that when I go to them, I can't actually see them on the Google, the Google uh, Street View. When I go down the strip, I can see the buildings like coming soon. This is 2008, right? Macau Studio City. <laughs> If I go up the, um, so this is the, the strip as we know it, right? It has the Venetian, has the Paris, the two I just talked about that Melco owns. And they do have Altira up here. Still close to the airport, but it's not on the, uh, it's an old, it's the old, I'll call it the old school. <laughs> the old school casitas. Again, their picture, fancy. I don't know, they must have cropped out all the buildings around it. At least when I go to Google Maps for uh, this one, it's there because it's older. <laughs> That's what it was called in 2008. Doesn't even have Altero on the front. This is Crown. But yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, but yeah, that's definitely the same building. But it's the same exact same architecture. Just with their type of lighting. <laughs> so anyway, to the Philippines, they do have a newer casino there. Also in the City of Dreams band, which is a strong brand for them. This is Street View as of 2019 anyway. Their picture, City of Dreams. So if you see COD anywhere, it's not Call of Duty at City of Dreams. <laughs> they do have one in Cypress. This is being built. And they have a legacy casino right by. This is pretty cool. It is. It does look pretty neat once it's built anyway. But as of right now, the operations have started to come back, at least before the big shutdowns again because of the Delta variant in China. But you can see uh, City of Dreams. Went from minus 70 million in adjusted EBITDA to plus 80 million. 
quite a recovery in that casino. Manila did swing positive despite being shut down for quite a bit of Q2 2022, or sorry, 2021. Video City was slowly clawing its way back out from minus 42 million just EBITDA to minus 1 million just EBITDA. So almost broke even for the shutdowns. Those are the two that matter the most to me. And Altura and the Mocha Clubs are still on profitable. And you can see the economics have started to recover, or they were starting to recover, I should say. <laughs> and you can see Studio City was clawing its way back out before the shutdown again. Altera is the weaker one because it's kind of bouncing around and not going linearly back up. If I'm looking for reopening play, I want this linear kind of reopening, right? Because <laughs> I know this company or this, these businesses are capable, these locations are all capable of making positive adjusted EBITDA if there is enough demand for casinos, which there will be once there's a true reopening, right? So at the same time, if there's going to be these draconian shutdowns, then how does... It's always dicey, right? But right now, I think I'm getting paid the odds that at some point between now and the beginning of 2023... I'm probably going to make some money on this reopening play again. But yeah, again, you can see it was starting to recover versus last year, but barely. And then I just had to shut down again, so it's going to be weak again. Still a, still a fraction of its former self, and that's why the share price is still a fraction of what it used to be. Really, you're just betting on a reopening with this type of strategy. On the balance sheet, I did want to point out the leverage, because I've kind of talked about it a bit. This is heavy leverage, so $6 billion in debt. Remember, we saw that creep up on the interest when we went to the year-over-year uh, income statement. So there is quite a lot of debt. So for this company, it's definitely risky, especially with call options. If the occupancy never comes back, then this thing is going to expire worthless, right? My little position. Yeah. V8 contracts for Melco, the $10 call for uh, what's that? Today is August 28th. So I got basically 16 months to buy this at 10 bucks. And currently it's back to trading to almost 13, which is nice. This thing panicked and went down to 1080 again uh, just a week ago. So these things are swinging really crazy right now. China by itself is swinging crazy. And then also, we also saw off the sand sell off very hard as well. So I picked that up again. Anyway, I thought this was interesting. So on the call, they talked about how they were starting to come back a bit. But I thought this was good because it tells you that they're still only 50% of what they were 2019 levels. And this was during the Q2 for a decent casino. I'm excited for this to actually come back. But when we saw the share price actually front run the recovery, like this thing went from 1080 last time around during the initial COVID panic and it went back up to 25. What I'm trying to say is that the stock is trying to price in a recovery at certain points and at other times it's trying to price in like it's never coming back. <laughs> so it's very volatile. I thought this was interesting. So I kind of talked about Altera a bit and they've embarked on a shift that aligns Melco's first integrated resort with the company's broader focus. Basically, here you go. We shut down VIP operations at Altera and moved it. So they're pushing more traffic on the VIP side to their two, in my opinion, better and superior casinos, which appear to have superior economics. So I like this move because they're not making money right now and they're having shutdowns again. So what they're doing is trying to make hotels and gambling more scarce, right? Because demand is scarce. And I like that. So they're shutting down a weak casino. You see this right here. Extractive transformation take approximately 12 months, and we expect Altera to emerge as a stronger, higher margin, more stable property. Because that's the one that was yin yanging, right? Where Studio City was slowly climbing back up, and City of Dreams, Macau was already back to profitability and adjusted EBITDA, despite only being 50% of what it was. I like this idea, so I think this is smart for them, which is what I want to see. I want to see reaction, right? I don't want to see them just sitting around hoping COVID comes back. I want to see some action just in case it doesn't. I did think this was interesting as well. So the CFO's comment, and he's like, we've incurred some one-off expense items that impacted our property. So in May, we launched this thinking of you special leave program, which really is just a marketing way to say, hey, you can take a reduced salary if you don't want to work for a bit. So that's how they're handling this. I did find it interesting that the accounting requires them to take the 14 million charge up front. <laughs> so they're going to have reduced staff expenses in future periods, but they had some upfront costs right now. I thought that was interesting. And they also have a new chapter program with a voluntary exit scheme. Basically, I view it kind of like a severance package, but China version. So two 14 million charges. And again, that's to reduce the headcount because demand isn't coming back as quickly as they wanted. And I also think it's part of that synergy with the more forcing the traffic from Altira to City of Dreams. Now, the most important thing because COVID lingering is the balance sheet, right? And so they have been able to get debt and they have been getting it at more attractive prices than what I thought they'd get because technically the company is 20% of what it was, right? So I was like, what's the debt going to be like for these guys, right? When they try to get more. So they were able to tap in for another $350 million, which isn't a small amount. They already had $6 billion on the balance sheet of debt. Most importantly, the yield to maturity was only 4.76, and it was trading over par. So basically what I'm trying to say is that the market still doesn't view this company as a credit risk. <laughs> so it's still getting access to debt, which is important because if this lingers and the shutdown keeps lingering longer, then this is the big risk for this investment, right? I thought that was interesting. They do have $1.8 billion 
consolidated cash on hand, but they are burning through it. I did find this interesting. So they should say the vaccination rate in China is about 55% at the time of this call, which was July 27th. So it's already almost a, well, it is a month old now. And Hong Kong is around 40% and Macau. They're targeting 70% like most of the developed world is. And then this analyst did bring up the question on the two 14 million charges. And he's just saying, hey, am I reading this right? And we already went through it. Yeah, they're one-off charges. They should reduce expenses on the salary line in the future. Basically reducing headcount to react to the demand more. And I think funneling the traffic on the VIP side to the better economic casinos makes a lot of sense. Oh, this guy talked about, hey, are you still cutting with some more costs? So they did say they think about 25% of their cost savings will be permanent. So that's what I look for, right? I'm looking for companies that are taking advantage of COVID. Uh, similar to like that do free angle where they pulled a whole bunch of cost out of the business that's going to be permanent they did the same thing here but yeah overall this company historically you've been putting up bet basically between 50 cents and a buck so when it's trading at 10 assuming they can get a buck <laughs> it's trading at 10 times earnings but technically it doesn't have earnings right now so really you're buying this for the growth in the cow over time and it was slowly growing you can see though it's been very inconsistent but i think you're going to get a nice recovery here that's why i'm currently in it Ultimately, it's another risky recovery play, but what I saw here, the chart kind of explains it pretty good. You can see during the initial COVID panic, this thing went from, let's just go right before uh, January 12th, 2020. You can see it at 25 bucks, and then you can see it slammed down to 11 bucks. It actually printed 1080 that day, 1081 was the low, and then it rejected it pretty quick, right? Shot back up to 15, which is a 50% positive move to the upside, all right? And then all the way back up and down and up and down, so pretty volatile. And then you can see during February, it actually hit 21 again. It actually printed 23.65 that day, which is pretty crazy. And then you can see it just run down the other way. <laughs> One end of the ballot, you to the other pretty quick. Yeah, six months, you're going from 21 down to 1084. Again, it hit 1080 and bounced, which is very interesting, right? Obviously, there's people, technical analysis, doing a double bottom. And now we're back to 1250 again. A lot of Chinese companies rallied all at once, right? But so did LVS, so anyway... That's what I'm trying to play, and you can see it rejected around the same level, around 12 bucks in uh, 2016. Just another way to play a uh, recovery play. This one is the China recovery play. And I also picked up LVS too, which I think made some pretty good moves, selling off certain assets and focusing on China, which I think is the going to be really good for gambling once we get out of this. So again, you never know when the next crazy lockdown is going to be and destroy uh, <laughs> destroy the quarter. <laughs> makes this kind of fun but yeah you can see this company also got smelt going from like 63 all the way down to i think it printed 37 what did i get in yeah i got in at 37.5 so i got in pretty good again i was all i was doing was saying okay we're back to the covid panic again is it the end of the world for lbs i don't know they just sold a bunch of assets and improved their balance sheet <laughs> technically in my eyes this company is actually better than it was during the last covid panic but anyway i digress a bit there but you can see them both bouncing at the same time. And I am always have the optimistic view that COVID will be behind us at some point in the future, right? Anyway, I'd like to know your thoughts. It's uh, just another reopening play, this time on the casino side. If I had to pick a balance sheet that's safer, probably LVS. But, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're still, you're still uh, betting on the recovery. And then just at those prices, you're getting pretty good odds. But at some point, we're going to be better than where we are. So with options, you're timing that, right? So it's always risky, but... I think Malco is probably worth over 20, so I didn't have a problem paying 365 to get the option to buy at 10, right? Just because the charts kind of supports it around there. So we'll have to see what happens. For all I know, it's going to blow against me. It'll be another big shutdown, a lot of quarantines. We'll have to see, especially with the vaccination rates improving all over the world. I think this Delta variant helped a lot of people that were on the fence about getting the vaccine, getting the vaccine. But yeah, anyway, have a... Have a great rest of your weekend.